Hi, my name is Mike Dillard, and this is Self Made Man, the podcast for men who want to leave their mark on the world and create a legacy of honor, integrity, and achievement in every aspect of their lives. I'm glad you're here, and once again, it is time to forge your destiny. Today, we sit down with the man, the myth, the legend, and the nerd himself, Mr. Steve Cam from nerdfitness.com. You know, today's show is going to be incredibly powerful for so many reasons. In my opinion, Steve is the perfect example of somebody who's turned their passion into their business almost by accident. And what I found most interesting is how he got his initial start simply by writing articles and building his list, literally opt-in by opt-in, one at a time organically. And essentially, he discovered what I have over the years as well, which is that long-term success is never determined by short-term marketing gimmicks. But what's really interesting is what Steve and his team have been up to these days when it comes to their paid community and how they're gamifying the entire experience. So how do you get a bunch of self-proclaimed computer nerds to get into health and fitness? You turn it into a game. You give them the ability to level up, to earn rewards, to select their avatar, which is exactly what they've done, and it's been working like gangbusters for them. So if you've ever thought about turning your passion into a niche business, this is the episode that you've been waiting for. Please help me welcome Steve Cam. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Dillard here for another episode of Self-Made Man. And today we are joined by Mr. Steve Cam from nerdfitness.com. So Steve, welcome to the show, brother. Mike, what's up, dude? How you doing? I'm doing good. Enjoying some amazing, amazing weather here in Austin, Texas, and just cranking, man. I'm slightly jealous. It's uh, it's a little chilly here in New York City, but it's it's not too bad. I I moved here a few months ago, and it's been uh, I've just had an absolute blast since since making the move. Very cool. I love New York. I uh, I will take every opportunity that I can to come up and and visit there. I've been fortunate enough to go hang out with the CharityWater.org crew and Scott oh, cool. Harrison and all of them. So uh, that's been awesome. And, you know, today I am really looking forward into diving behind the story of your company and your brand, Nerd Fitness, because I think it's one of the absolute best examples that I've ever seen for or of an entrepreneur who has a passion that, you know, they've gotten into personally. They want to turn it into a business and they're coming into a really crowded niche in a crowded market. And with the use of one single word, one little itty bitty twist, you've essentially created and carved out an entire niche for yourself in the health and fitness world. And so I can't wait to dive into that story. But before we get into the business stuff, I'd really like it if you could share your story with everybody who's listening on where you came from, how you ended up here, why you started Nerd Fitness to let them really get familiar with uh, with your history. Sure. I was 16 or 17, I can't remember, but I had just been cut from the high school basketball team, uh, which was now looking back unsurprising as I was terrible and I couldn't dribble with my left hand and <laughs> I was, you know, 5'10 and weighed about 120 pounds and had no business being on a basketball court. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to come back next year big and strong and I'm going to make the team and I'll show everybody. Mm. And the next day I signed up for a gym membership and I walked into a gym and like a sheep without a shepherd, just wandered and had no clue what I was doing in there. Just wandered from machine to machine and eventually decided to lie down on the bench and try to do some bench presses. And I think I loaded up more weight on the bar than I currently weighed at the time, having also never trained before that moment. And the first thing I did was like my spaghetti arm slowly got the weight off the off the safety rack. And then I immediately just dropped it directly onto my chest and had to do like the I don't know what you call it, like the a safety roll or something. Yeah, where yeah. I had to like kind of like twist to the sign. And meanwhile, like the bar is grinding into my rib cage and like the weights go spinning off either end of the bar and the, the gym was up on the second floor. So it sounded like two gunshots just went off in this gym. And <laughs> I had uh, 40 people. So I guess 80 eyes uh, staring at me at wondering what I was doing and, and who I was and what the heck I was doing there. And that was one of the most uh, humiliating and also like, I guess now, geez, looking back, I guess I could say life changing moments in my life. Forge, I came back the next day and decided to ask somebody, hey, I'm looking to get started with strength training. What do you advise? And, you know, I took advice from anybody I could and slowly but surely learned how to train. And over the course of the rest of high school and all of college, I dutifully went to the gym four to five days a week. And I read Muscle and Fitness magazine and followed the bodybuilder workout programs. 
And in six years, I think I had put on like three pounds total. So it was something, something uh, horribly, uh, something, something terrible compared to the amount of time and energy and effort I was putting into this thing. And after college, I moved to San Diego uh, with my brother and they gave me some free personal trainer sessions. And I was like, I've been training for six years. I know what I'm doing. Fortunately, I, the guy's like, well, dude, you get it for free. You might as well take them. At least he can spot you on your exercises. I'm like, well, oh, sure. Fair enough. Why not? So I talked to the guy and he's like, all right, what are you doing for your workouts? I'm like, well, Monday is chest day and Tuesday is shoulders and Wednesday is this and Thursday. He's like, okay, cool. Uh, we're going to forget all of that. Instead, we're going to get really strong with squats, overhead presses, deadlifts, pushups, and pull-ups. I was like, well, what about bicep curls and calf? He's like, don't worry about any of that crap. We're just going to get really strong. It's like, okay. What about your diet? I'm like, well, I eat this, this, and this, and this. He's like, okay, great. I'm going to get rid of all of that, and you're going to do this instead. I'm like, that sounds crazy. I've been doing this for six years. Well, no, what, I got. I got to ask. What did he say? <laughs> he, uh, what he were actually, you doing? And then what did he say? I was very. I was very thin. So he actually had me double the amount of calories that I was consuming. I mean, it was it doubled it. Uh, I was eating a lot more rice, a lot more chicken. You know, a lot really uh, more vegetables. I mean, nothing, nothing crazy. But for me, it was. It's like, there's no way I could ever eat that much food. And that's way too much of rice or way too much protein or whatever. And he's like, just, just give me a month. And I think in a month I put on about 15 pounds Wow! in a, in a good way. Muscle, um, yeah. You know, not obviously not all of it was muscle, but for somebody that had struggled to try to get healthy for six years and had put in all this time and energy to work out less and eat more and finally start to look like the person I wanted to look like and start to actually build some self-confidence this light bulb went off in my head. I was like, man, for if it took me six years and I thought I knew what I was doing until finally somebody told me the right way, there's got to be other people out there like me that are interested in, in doing this but don't have six years to make mistakes. So I just started learning everything I could about health and fitness. I, I didn't have any true desire to turn it into a business. I didn't, I didn't think about a website or anything. It was just like, I like this stuff and I want to help other people. And then about a year later, so at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm in sales selling construction equipment. A year later, I stumbled across, uh, walked into a bookstore and stumbled across Tim Ferriss's for our work week, like, mm. like many, many others have. And it was on a particularly terrible day at my job, which I was horrible at and very mismatched for. And uh, picked up the book, read it cover to cover in about two days. And there was a big part of it that said, pick a social group you're a part of and something you're good at. And for me, it was like, well, I've built computers. I spent all of my free time reading books and playing video games. And something I'm good at at this point, I feel like I've kind of cracked the code for helping people starting to get health and f- healthy and fit. I Googled nerd and fitness and nothing popped up. So I purchased nerdfitness.com and decided at some point down the road after getting a personal trainer certification and building up a little bit more confidence to just start writing articles and helping people. And that was really kind of the genesis of, of nerd fitness. I wanted to help beginners like myself overcome I guess, mental limitations or overcome just the plethora of bad information out there in the internet when it comes to making healthier food decisions, having a healthier relationship with food, getting stronger and starting to feel better about yourself. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, on the on the marketing side, I assume this is the first business that you ever decided to start. Yes, I, I'd started a music blog probably two months before I'd started Nerd Fitness. I don't know what my thought process was there, but I think it was like, oh, I'm going to write about concerts and CDs and maybe I'll get uh, record labels will send me free CDs and I can get free tickets to concerts. I think that was the extent as, as far as I thought on that. And then as soon as I had to start analyzing music, I was like, oh, this is making this not fun for me. I quickly abandoned that and and I had already purchased nerdfitness.com and decided like, no, I think this is the thing that uh, I can I can eventually build something around. Maybe I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'll just I'll start here and see what I can come up with. Yeah, very cool. So that's what I was going to get into next is You've, you've got your name, you've got your, your domain name. This is your very first foray into the, let's just call it the information publishing space. What did you do next? Did you <laughs> just like, am I going to write an ebook? Did you buy some courses? Did you go to some events? Like, how did you navigate this for the first time? Uh, well, I never bought any courses. I didn't go to any events. I didn't do any research on how to build a business. I'm actually fortunate that I think I was so naive and optimistic. And I apologize for these sirens. It's, uh, you know, obviously here in New York, they're, they're, they're freaking everywhere. And I didn't want to do, you know, I, I didn't know any better. Like, I think if I had known better or if I had known somebody that was doing this online thing, they probably would have told me, like, why would you ever get into the fitness space? It's so crowded and oversaturated and there's no way to be any different with it. And how do you, 
how do you make push-ups and eating better, you know, different? Like it's the same information across everybody, which again, I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any money to spend on courses. I didn't have, I didn't know that that was really a thing. So I, uh, I really kind of sat in the domain for about a year, uh, actually moved cross country and took a much better job for way less money, but I was actually enjoyed what I was doing there. I went to work for a company doing marketing that they actually created and promoted floating music festivals, which was really, really cool. So I worked for them for a few years and it was about halfway through working for them that I finally worked at The Courage and had already got the personal trainer certification that I stumbled across Chris Gillibo and his free ebook, 279 Days to Overnight Success. And so I guess my education really came from reading the 4-Hour Workweek and then stumbling across Tim Ferriss's, I'm sorry, stumbling across Chris Gillibo and his free ebook that said something like, start writing articles, become insanely helpful to the people in your audience. And then eventually, when you have enough of them, ask them what their struggles are and build things to help solve those problems. So I was like, I, I think I can do that. So I really just started writing. I was publishing five articles a week when I started and eventually moved on to just writing two articles a week that uh, the, the format that Nerd Fitness now follows, but two articles that are anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 words to 5,000 words each full of PubMed back studies and research and nerdy references and Lego photos and, and kind of the things that nerd fitness has, has nice. since so become you, known for. Yeah, yeah. You permeated your, your brand throughout all of that. Right. Exactly. So that was, that was kind of organic. It wasn't, it wasn't like a, you know, I didn't like go to business school and say like, Oh, well this branding technique is going to attract whatever. And like, Oh, this niche and seven years is going to be really popular thanks to Star Wars and Marvel and whatever. (laughs) I was like, I'm just a huge nerd and I want to help people that are struggling with the same stuff that I'm struggling with and I want to help them. And that was really the beginning of nerd fitness. And again, I didn't know any better, thankfully, because that's what allowed me to really grind out that first year of very few people reading, not really understanding SEO. To this day, I still don't really understand (laughs) SEO. And just slowly adding one person at a time to uh, to the email list and to the community and, and starting to help them out and build them up. Were you syndicating your articles throughout different you know fitness websites? Did you pursue becoming like guest contributors on those sites or how were you getting them out there? Oh, geez, for the first nine months, I was literally writing and then hitting publish on Facebook and Twitter and being like, hey, look, I wrote an article, check it out. Mm. And I think after nine months, I had 90 email subscribers and that was after publishing five articles a week. And Again, I didn't know any better. I was like, hey, 90 is pretty cool. That's almost 100, you know? <laughs> like, I just, again, I, did, I didn't know any better. But in those nine months, I found my voice and started to really enjoy writing and started to see which articles resonated better with certain people and, and started to get emails from people asking questions and things. So as soon as I got my first reader and they emailed me and said, hey, man, I love the site. Like, I'm like, oh, great. What are you struggling with? And then they'd leave a comment or they'd email me back and say like, I'm struggling with this and this and this. I'm like, okay, great. So those would be my next three articles. And then hope that somebody would send me another email or leave another comment that had another struggle after those three posts that would get me to the next one. And so that was really how it started. Uh, It was after that, that I unknowingly, I guess, started to make some pretty uh, powerful connections. Uh, One, two in particular, one was by one was with a gentleman named Adam Baker who ran a website called Man vs. Debt. And I just really resonated with his message. And he had written a post called How to Not Suck at Blogging that was tremendously influential on me and, and changing my how I wrote from the five short topical articles to two evergreen con two long evergreen articles each week. And then I just started emailing back and forth with um, Brett McKay over at Art of Manliness. And I just emailed them and said, Hey man, I love your website and I love what you've built with the community. And I didn't ask him for anything. I didn't say, can I write for you? I didn't say, will you promote this? I just said, I love what you're doing. And it's funny. There are so many people in the online space. I think that probably would agree to this or agree with this, but you get so many emails from people telling you why you're doing things wrong or why you should do something differently or thanklessly ask you for, or just ask you for things and don't even say thanks. So when you get somebody that emails you that just says like, hey, I really appreciate what you're doing and, and thanks for doing that, it actually stands out. You know, people think it's kind of gets lost in the sea of things, but no, those, that's, those things, they're yeah. so few and far between. Yeah. Somebody is just literally saying, thank you for what you do. Because more often than not, they're like, thanks for what you do. By the way, you should promote my supplement or hey, right. you should definitely tell my your audience about my stuff. And people don't realize when they're growing, like 
you asking somebody else to endorse your thing is essentially them putting their entire reputation and their however many years of karma on the line with their audience to say, hey, I'm backing my reputation with this other thing. Dude, so when people are like, me up on Twitter. <laughs> right, yeah, just, yeah, whatever. And, and people are like, well, yeah, but you should just promote this thing. So I'm like, no. So when I stumbled across <laughs> Brett and his community, I was like, here's a guy that is doing what I want to do in an ethical, fun way that I want to do it. Like He just helps men become better men, better husbands, better fathers, better boyfriends, better sons, whatever. So I just emailed them and said, thank you. And it started a very brief kind of correspondence back and forth. And I'd share an article from, you know, find something on World War II I found interesting or whatever and send it to him. And after, I want to say a few months of just the occasional back and forth, he emailed me and said, hey, by the way, you know, I saw that your email address was steve at nerdfitness.com. So I clicked through to it because I thought it was a unique name. And I love what you're doing with the website. Uh, I'd love for you to write something for me at some point if you're, if you're up for it. And that kind of validation from him, from somebody that had succeeded in a way that I wanted to, was really powerful. And you know, he started sharing some of the stuff that I'd written with his audience. And then I finally, a few months later, after going back and forth and working and crafting this guest post for him for, I want to say, maybe three months. Like I really, I put everything I could into this for, for months. I uh, shared it with him. And it that one post, I think, doubled my audience overnight from let's say seven or 800 subscribers to 1500 mm. like within a day or two. And, uh, I think other than that, I don't, I've even to this day, I've only written a handful of guest posts. Really. It's been a, a lot of word of mouth. And fortunately, thanks to many years of content creation and, and trying to help people in unique ways, uh, Google has taken a favorable liking to us in certain search terms that again, through, I, I don't, I don't necessarily understand SEO, nor do I care to, I just try to write stuff that's helpful and Google has has listed us highly in certain terms for months here and there. So most of the site has been grown specifically through word of mouth. There's been the occasional guest post um, and some people stumble across it through Google, but it's just been, I, I like to think like this book I'd written was kind of like my first step out of the shadows. I've really spent the past seven years with my head down, just writing stuff and trying to help people. Yeah, I mean, you've said a couple of things that I, I can definitely appreciate. The The whole thank you thing is huge, and it's unbelievable how uh, rare it actually happens to where if somebody, you know, whether it's on a Facebook post or Twitter, just says, hey, thanks so much, this was awesome. Like, that's one out of 100 comments usually, where there's, right. nothing, there's no agenda t- attached. So I'd highly recommend if you, that if you guys want to get to know someone out there in the world, doing the same thing is one of the absolute best ways to go about it is just to just to quickly come one one thing quickly there Mm. like if you send that and then somebody doesn't email you back you'd be like oh what a jerk like emails are so email is so fickle some things get passed through but like i can already see some people potentially listening being like oh well if i want to get a hold of somebody and eventually get them hooked you know whatever then i'll start with this and that's step one to whatever it's like no you truly have to have no ulterior motive it's just like hey, I appreciate what you're doing and thank you for doing it. And it might, something might come out of it. You might get a, hey, quick thanks. You might get nothing, but they get read, I promise you. And I, I do everything I can to try to get back to everybody, but it's uh, it's interesting. So just trying to, a oh, quick caveat there. No, like, that's really, that's really I mean, important. Yeah, and in fact, in my first book, I actually wrote about that. And the whole concept is that you must be willing to give without want before you can get. Bingo. And you just have to be genuine about that. So I, I, thanks for throwing that in there. So just like you over the last eight years, I never really looked for shortcuts or gimmicks either. I really focused on producing the best quality content that I could, getting that out to people to address their needs and serve them. And doing that consistently over time will automatically mean that you win because everybody else is chasing a quick result, trying to use gimmicks. They don't have the staying power and within 12 months, they're gone and they're burned out because you know they got 90 subscribers in a year and that wasn't enough and they, they leave. Oh, well, yeah, because they've been told, oh, well, in just three months, if I buy this course, I'll get one quick tip to blah, blah, blah. It's it's no different than the fitness industry. Like, how do you get bigger and stronger? It's like you pick up heavy things every other day for year after year after year, and you put a little bit more in the bar. You're not chasing the next fad, the next workout muscle confusion thing. It's like you just, it's, 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 the parallels there are pretty crazy. Yeah, agreed. Now, when it comes to your brand, who is the ideal you know, person to tap into nerd fitness, because when I'm thinking about the brand, and this is just me, when I think about nerd, I think about two different types of people. I think about Silicon Valley, tech nerd, wickedly smart, confident person, 
but they're spending a lot of time at a desk in front of a computer. They're into sci-fi. They're into that whole genre, which is awesome. And they want to get healthier, and so they tap into this. And then there's also a different kind of avatar, if you will, of someone who would be attracted to this brand, which would be an individual, especially guys who don't have a lot of self-confidence. So these are the guys that are at home playing video games all day because they don't believe in themselves. Their health and fitness is not there. Their personal self-image is not very positive. And so which, do you get both audiences or do you target one specifically? Or am I missing something here totally that I'm not seeing? No, you're, I think you, you're, you're circling both of them for sure. So I think nerd fitness tends to be somebody, somebody between 25 and 40. Maybe married, maybe not, maybe single, maybe whatever, but tend to work at a desk job, uh, either male or female. Actually, I think our audience is actually 60, 40 female to male, mm. which is interesting and nothing I had ever imagined when I first started, but has since kind of, it's, it's evolved into now very, very, I think close to evenly split between the two. And I, you know, I think they, when I use the, the word nerd, I use it very endearingly and, and positively. And the best example of a definition I've heard of nerd came from Will Wheaton, who is, you know, he was on Star Trek back in the day and, and has a recurring, um, recurring role on uh, Big Bang Theory. Somebody asked him what a nerd meant to him and how this person could raise their child to be a nerd and be proud of it. And he said, a nerd is not, it's not what you love, but it's, it's how you love it. And I just thought that was so cool because... I, I can totally relate. For me, it's books and video games. I think for somebody else, it might be coding. If somebody else, it might be a language learning nerd. They might be a med school nerd or a sports stats nerd or a music nerd or whatever it may be. But they love something and they're almost to the point of, I don't want to say fault, but to the point where it goes beyond just a simple love of what it is. Like It's almost like an obsession where if they beat a game, they then dig into getting every trophy in it. Or if they learn about something, they learn everything about that subject. So I think nerd fitness is a cool conglomeration of nerds from all walks of life that tend to have a regular job working at a desk, uh, have maybe tried to get healthier fit in the past and have been unsuccessful with it and they stumble across nerd fitness in the community and they finally feel like they found their new home. You know, they not only get a chance to embrace and celebrate the nerdy things that make them unique and make them who they are, but they also get to learn about health and fitness and take care of themselves and uh, do it in a, in a really fun kind of unique gamer type way. So it's a good mix between men and women, uh, probably between 25 and 40, all the way people younger and older that work a regular job, that just want to start living better and they're sick of the nonsense that they found either on the internet or infomercials or in pills or products or whatever. And they just want, they just want the information to get started and start feeling better about themselves. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. How did you turn this into a business? Meaning, what did your business model eventually become when you started to get subscribers? How did you go full time in this so that you could you know, replace your income? It was about, I want to say, 16 months after I had started. This was a few months after the Art of Manliness guest post had come out. And I realized that if nerd fitness was going to become what I thought it had the potential to become, I needed to start removing myself from, from kind of the top of the pyramid. So I didn't want it to be Steve dishes out information and everybody is a fan of Steve and Steve, it's all about Steve and the spotlight is on me. I wanted to shine the spotlight on nerd fitness and on the community that I, that was starting to kind of spring up around the site. So I remember asking people in the community, do you want to build an empire or start a rebellion? And overwhelmingly the response came back in that people wanted to start a rebellion. And I remember Googling the star Wars, uh, star Wars rebel Alliance and seeing what their color scheme looked like. And uh, like overnight nerd fitness went from Steve in a blog to, a now worldwide community. I start. I started using terms like we and us and our, and I wrote what the rules were that we stood for as a community and mm. recruited people to join us. And And I, I really saw myself as a member of the rebellion and not just the guy, you know, I might've been the guy writing the articles, but it was everybody else that could start helping each other. And we added message boards and we started to have moderators that could, you know, help me out as well. And, and nerd fitness started to grow and, you know, I think even now I'm, I'm getting better and better at removing kind of uh, 
Steve from Nerd Fitness and trying to make it more about the community that we're all in this together, uh, which I think is really important for me and the longevity of the business. So once once we became a community, I then asked people what I could provide them with to allow me to work on this full time. And I think that was really what I said. I, I, I was like, guys, what what is it? Uh, this is how I want to spend the rest of my life. I want to work on this product or this project, this company and be a part of this community. What are your biggest pain points right now? And over, overwhelmingly, people came back and said, just tell me how to work out. Give me a workout plan and I'll follow it. So this is now, I think I'm about 18 months in since really focusing on it with my with my free time. It was starting to get busier and busier. I think I was probably at about 2,000, maybe 2,500 email subscribers and living on very little money anyways. So with the day job getting more hectic and the website getting more hectic, I actually ended up quitting this day job. Mind you, remember, I'm going on music cruises with rock stars in the Caribbean and having an absolute blast with it. I decided to quit that before I made my single dollar, before I made a single dollar with Nerd Fitness because I didn't want to leave the company high and dry and I knew if I stuck around for for. for for a few extra months, things were going to get uh, kind of dicey. So I quit. I had a few months of money saved up as my quote unquote runway and spent the next month kind of locked in my bedroom, putting out my or writing my first ebook. I filmed six months worth of exercise routines and, and workout programs and diet advice and packaged it up in a collection of PDFs with links to YouTube videos. And about a month after I quit, finally put it out and said, hey guys, this is how I'm hoping to turn this into a business. I would love for you to support it. Uh, it comes with a lifetime money back guarantee. If it doesn't work for you, I don't want your money, uh, but please check it out. And I ended up selling, I think my goal was to sell 40 of them. And it was like 40 bucks a piece, I think. And I ended up selling, I think it was like 150 or 200 of them in four days, which just blew me away. I think I started bawling my eyes out on that first <laughs> afternoon, to be honest with you. You know, again, at this point, everybody had already told me I was crazy and um, people told me I was crazy and that I was quitting this crazy, this amazing job to try this unproven opportunity and uh, it really validated everything I had worked on up to that point. And I told myself, really, it's like, if this doesn't work and I don't sell enough of these, I'll go bus tables, I'll go push soundstage equipment around. I don't care what I have to do, but I need to dedicate the majority of my time to nerd fitness. And if this doesn't work, I'll find a different revenue model for nerd fitness that does work. Now, fortunately, the ebook was successful. And after that, it's I ended up putting out two more ebooks over the course of the next two years, which sustained me for quite a while. And since then, we've kind of switched to a membership model, not recurring revenue, but rather an online course that people pay once and get access to by logging in called the Nerd Fitness Academy. We have Nerd Fitness Yoga. There's Camp Nerd Fitness. There is an iPhone app. I now have this book. So it's evolved over many years. But for the first few years, it was just uh, collections of PDFs with workout plans that people could purchase and uh, at a very reasonable price and use to kind of kickstart their their journey from day one. Well, go into the Academy really quick because if you guys go to the website and check this out, nerdfitness.com, go over to uh, the Quest or Academy up at the top. You've turned this entire, gosh, user interface, if you will, or website into what looks like a video game, <laughs> which is really, really neat. So if you could share a little bit about that and how you came up with that idea and, and how it's been working for people. Sure. Well, since day one, the tagline for Nerd Fitness has been level up your life. I was raised on the regular, on an old school regular Nintendo and the majority of my childhood was spent playing Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64. When I got to high school and college, I was dumping most of my free time into a game called EverQuest, which is this online, massively multiplayer role-playing game where you get to pick a class, you can be a wizard, warrior, whatever, and go explore and slay dragons. And while I was selling construction equipment, this is where all of my time was going. And eventually I realized if I was going to take control of my life, I had to make some pretty drastic changes. And I thought, you know, I'm hooked on these games. There's got to be a like a psychology reason kind of a reason behind why I'm so hooked to him or hooked on them. And uh, I really dug in and, and kind of hatched this idea that like, well, what if the life that we're currently living is the game and we are the characters and like this, it's it's this persistent world that we're in. What does that look like? And I equated it to having quests and missions for people to complete that would improve their lives, that they would actually check off and allow themselves to see an experience bar fill up and, and actually allow these people to level up a character as they improve themselves from a health and fitness perspective. 
we also really dug into this idea of like a, a kind of a fantasy archetype. So what does, how can I take those kind of video game ways that people can specialize? Like, oh, do you want to be a warrior or a monk or a druid or whatever? Why don't we apply those mechanics to life too? So I, I wrote this article that kind of lined up real life ways of training with video game archetypes. So if you love to strength train, you're a warrior. If you love to run or ride a bike or swim, you're a scout. If you want to do martial arts, you're a monk. If you want to do parkour or gymnastics, you'd be an assassin and, and, and things along these lines. So really kind of dug in and doubled up on this idea of life is a game. We're the character and you have a, you have a part to play. Like the world kind of, the world needs more heroes as, as we put it on nerd fitness. And we encourage people to kind of really embrace that and look at life in this unique way so that you're not just, oh, I'm not just going to the gym and oh, I have to eat broccoli and blah, blah, blah. And I have to do this and that. And I hate it and I'm miserable. Instead, it's today I have a quest to complete and that quest requires me to do this and this and this. And I know if I do this, I am now stronger than I was last week. I get to check a box that says I completed the the strength building quest and uh, I get to, my character will move from level six to level seven and I'm a warrior or I'm part of the ranger guild or whatever it may be. So we just went all in on this idea that life is a game and there, you know, people are writing their unique backstories and being a part of it. So this is all tied into the academy. And now with this book, I just put out level up your life. It's a, it's a free part of nerd fitness as well, where you can actually create your own character and create your own list of quests and start crossing them off and, and level yourself up. It's pretty fun. Yeah, it's awesome. Do you guys ever go do anything at Comic-Con? Not yet. So you should. <laughs> oh, for sure. You know, right to, to right now to us, it's it was just me for a long time. And then it was me and a part-timer. And, and then it was me and one full-timer. And then me and a full-timer and a part-timer. And really over the past two years, have I kind of gone all in on let's make Nerd Fitness uh, a, a great company to work for as well. So now we're at the point where we have nine full-time employees that live in nine different states. And you know, I'm proud to say that I can pay people really well and they get to live wherever they want and do what they want as long as they get their jobs done. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a, a balance for us to, with a small team and a massive community to take care of, where does our time and energy go? And at the moment, we've kind of just doubled down on, instead of trying to get more people into it, what we've done up to this point that has worked really well is just really try to take care of the people that are in it and have faith that that will serve as kind of its own marketing tool to for people to then recruit their friends. You know, we're closing in on 300,000 email subscribers at the moment, uh, having spent zero dollars really on advertising up to this point. So, you know, we don't go to conferences, we don't go to whatever. It's truly been word of mouth and, and encouraging people to recruit their friends as we grow and profits increase, I think we're going to be able to do some cool stuff at Comic-Con or PAX or whatever it is. It's just been a matter of resources and where do we spend our limited amount of time that we have while trying to keep a, a nice balanced lifestyle for my team members too. Yeah, very cool. What have been the biggest challenges that you've had to overcome? Because just like I, I see software like this and I'm just like, every time I've tried to do really custom software, <laughs> it's cost me a ton, a ton of money. It's been a, a big, huge headache. So I'm just wondering if there's anything that you've had to go through that, you know, was a big lesson learned for you. Yeah. Well, a few things. I think one, I tried to do this idea that life was a game and create a character a few years ago on a bootstrapped budget. And after a year of development, I decided to put, put it on hold because I would, it, it just wasn't moving in the right direction. And I only had part of people's time and part of their income. So only now, really in the past year and a uh, year and a half or so, have I been able to, you know, I've had this idea that life should be a game for so long and I just didn't have the resources or the talent or the team to pull it off. So rather than half-ass it, I waited until we could do it properly. Uh, another, you know, tough lesson I learned is three or four years ago, I dumped, I want to say between 30 and probably 30 and $40,000 and six months of my time into a nerd fitness iPhone app that did a lot of these things. And after I got the app from the company, I chose to never release it. So it was pretty much me watching $30,000 slowly <laughs> set itself on fire over the course of six months. And I had to sit there and watch it because it wasn't up to my standards. And I thought that the team, I'm sorry, I thought that the community deserved something better. So it's, I can't tell you how many emails I get every day from people being like, you should do a podcast and where's your iPhone app? And you know, the response is, we'll get to those things, but we're going to do them in our way that 
works for you. We're not going to do it just because we think we should cash in on it or because other people are telling us to. We're going to do it in the way that uh, makes sense and and serves the community properly. And if if we're you know just to half ass those things because people say we should do them is not the direction I'm heading in. So from a technical standpoint, it's been very challenging learning how to work with development companies, developers on our own team, setting timelines, hitting expectations, feature creep. It's it's uh, it's a whole different beast than something I've ever really dealt with. Uh, I, I think only now, probably 18 months after I started down this path, do I finally feel like we're getting, finding some traction and learning how to work together as a team and work with outside companies. And then lastly, the biggest challenge I think I've had to struggle with in the past two years is learning how to be a good leader. You know, I'm, I'm an introvert by nature and nothing makes me happier than an empty apartment and uh, a cup of coffee and a great playlist. And I just sit at my computer for 10 hours and, and write articles or write content. That sounds, uh, that sounds familiar. <laughs> that's all I wanted. That's, that's all I wanted to do. But I also felt like there was a, a cool opportunity for me to, you know, had I just stuck with that, there's no way any other aspect of nerd fitness would ever get done. And with me also deciding to want to, you know, deciding to write a, a traditionally published book as well, a lot of my time was going into writing. And if I was going to do that, then I needed to have a team around me that could operate and run the rest of Nerd Fitness. So to go from kind of a solo, kind of loner, solopreneur to now, I guess technically CEO of a company with, with nine employees, soon to be, you know, even more than that. And how to manage expectations and salary negotiation and hire the right people and not, you know, fortunately, I'm not a micromanager, but that means I also need to, I need to hire the right people that will take initiative and, and move things in the right direction, even when I'm not available. So I was probably a, a pretty terrible boss for the first six months of 2015. And I'm fortunate that I had very patient uh, employees and people that I've worked with that, that truly believe in nerd fitness and the mission and I think we started to find our stride towards the end of last year. And we all got together at our yearly event called Camp Nerd Fitness. But it was cool to bring the whole team there. And many of them that because it was brand new and they were brand new to see what nerd fitness looks like out in the real world uh, was was pretty special for me. And I think now we're kind of firing on all cylinders and making rapid progress in a lot of projects and really helping our community in fun ways. But man, the first six months of last year, I, I was starting to question like, is did I do the right thing in adding this level of complexity and, and mm. stress to my life? And now I know that I did. It was just, uh, I had to learn a lot about well, myself and how to manage. That's what I was going to ask you. How have you been navigating and learning this new skill set? Are you, is it a particular set of books that you've read? Are you mentoring under somebody? Um, yeah, I, I do have a, a business coach that I've hired uh, relatively recently, but he's a friend of mine that I've known for a long time. I just wanted to formalize it so that we could you know, instead of just infrequent or informal mm. uh, conversations, a, a big part of why I moved to New York City actually was I wanted to surround myself with other people doing big things. Uh, it was very important for me to think bigger and 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 remind myself why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm actually sitting here at, at my in my New York City apartment, looking out my window at the Empire State Building, and I, I look at it every night. And every night, the top of it is a different color. And I like say out loud every night, like, oh, what the color is to remind myself why I'm here and why I moved here and what I what I should be thinking about. So I thought that was very important. Uh, there's another great book that I read called Get a Grip. And I can't tell you who wrote it, but I have found it to be tremendously helpful in trying to manage my team and how to build it out and making sure I have the right people in the right places. So some of my hires have been we need to fill this role, for example, customer service, or we need a program or whatever. But I've had a few other hires too, where I just interact with somebody or have, you know, hire somebody for a part-time work on some contract. And after that, it's just very obvious to me, like this person is going to make nerd fitness better in some way. I need to hire them. So I've had a few hires on my team where I was like, we'll, we'll make it work. I don't, I'm, I'm not quite sure I have a full-time job for them yet, but these are the things that need to get done. The rest of this, how else can you make us better? And those people have just kind of run with it where I, I step back and say, like, this is your branch of nerd fitness. We now have an events branch of nerd fitness and a content branch and a product development branch and a customer service branch. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but I, I think it's been very helpful for me from, like I said, reading a book, uh, get a grip, uh, was, was very instrumental. I think in helping me frame properly, do I have the right people in the right seats 
And are we serving our community in the best way? And then also the show, uh, The Prophet, which is on was MSNBC. Mm-hmm. Or, I, I don't actually have cable, but I just I pay for it through iTunes. Uh, that's a consistent weekly reminder. Are we, you know, focusing on people, process, and product, and and helping people in the right way, and making those decisions uh, to make sure that we're we're doing those things? Very cool. And so, how does your book come into the big picture for all of this? And and when did you release it? Why did you write it? Sure. Uh, the book came out on January twelfth of this year, and like I said, the book is called Level Up Your Life, and the tagline is How to Unlock uh, Adventure and Happiness by Becoming the Hero of Your Own Story. So it's a it's a much broader book than you know. I, I think many people, when I told them I was writing a book and it wasn't a fitness book, that <laughs> again I'm crazy, you know. Just like people told me I was crazy to start a fitness blog, anyways. Uh, so uh, Seems this to is be the, that you're on a good path whenever they say yeah. That, right? This is the this is the book I wanted to write. I didn't want to write. Oh, just do more push ups and eat better. Like I've written 750 articles about that, and I write about it twice a week at nerdfitness.com. I wanted to write a book that was more broad and spoke more of my language, I think. And that was, it's a personal development book for people that probably aren't interested or skeptical of personal development, Mm. which I guess is kind of like nerd fitness is a health and fitness site for people that don't love health and fitness. So it's a book that helps people through behavioral psychology and video game mechanics, do the things that you've always wanted to do, uh, whether it's travel, run your first marathon, uh, climb your climb a mountain, learn a language, or learn a musical instrument. So it's a cool mix of kind of my autobiography, stories from the nerd fitness community, and the whole book follows the the story arc of the hero's journey. You know, you are the character in a game or a character in a movie, and the book kind of leads you step by step through what sort of life you're looking to live, how can you prioritize the things that are truly important to you, and how can you put how can you use behavioral psychology and game mechanics and kind of environmental hacking to get you to do those things? Uh, just off the, you know, for example, uh, while writing the book, I wanted to prove that the concepts worked. And because I couldn't travel nearly as much as I was doing due to having to write the book, I decided to learn how to play the violin. I didn't know how to play before. It just seemed like an interesting challenge to me. And it's an instrument I'd always loved. So I applied the mechanics and things that I talk about throughout the book to learning how to play the violin. And I'm still not great at it, but I'm significantly better than I've than I was before I started and and continue on continue to plan or continue to want to get better at it and and plan on doing so. So it's an interesting book that I, I couldn't be more proud of. I share some really fun stories and really help people put certain things in perspective and then how to systematically apply those things to your life to get you to the things you want to do. So through the book, you create a character, you create your list of quests and missions you're looking to complete, you assign experience point values to them, and uh, actually level up your character as you're improving yourself as a person. So that's all available. You can create a character for free at uh, levelupyourlife.com and, or through nerdfitness.com, but it all kind of ties into this nerd fitness universe that we're building where you'll have a character that will occupy any aspect of nerd fitness that you do. And you'll have missions and quests and things to complete. And you can write your backstory and group up with other people and things like that. So it's a, it's, it's looking at life like a game and applying behavioral psychology, I guess, to your life to get you to do the things you've always wanted to do. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, I just think this, like I said at the beginning, this is one of the best examples I've ever seen of somebody's taking a very general passion and, and a personal problem and, putting their own little unique twist on it and creating a universe, you know, just out of that little, that little twist. So what do you need help with most? What is your biggest challenge in life right now, whether it's business wise, personal, you know, whatever it may be, uh, what's your big challenge at the moment? Hmm. At the moment, my big challenge is trying to figure out what I want my second book to be. Um, (laughs) I had so much, well, I had so much fun writing the first one. Uh, again, as a as a kind of shy introvert, this whole doing interviews and and we did a book tour and having people like coming up to meet me was very very strange, in a, in a fun way but interesting. And I I'm kind of a masochist, I guess, in that aspect. So I'm excited to want to write another book. Other than that, I I don't know. I feel very fortunate. I I wake up every day and the work that I do helps people live better lives and has a net positive uh, effect on on this planet. I think. I work with great people and I'm proud to be part of this community of, of really supportive individuals from all over the planet. So I guess my biggest challenges at the moment are not sucking at the violin so much 
getting a little bit stronger at my deadlifts and handstands and uh, trying to continue to be a better boss and, and lead this company in the direction that I think it can go so that years from now, I hope Nerd Fitness can exist long after I'm gone and and do as Steve Jobs would say, you know, give us a chance to put a dent in the universe. Mm, very cool. Very cool. Well, this has been um, incredibly insightful and interesting. There's so many lessons to be learned in here, guys, that uh, I really hope that this hit home for you. This is, you know, really a very proven, time-tested formula for success if you want to turn your passion, you know, or your hobby into a business. So, Steve, you know, obviously we've mentioned the site already, nerdfitness.com. Everybody can really go plug into your world there. Where else can they go to get a copy of the book or or just to check out all of y'all's uh, awesome stuff that you've got going on? Sure. Uh, you can learn more about the book and read the first chapter for free and create your own character at levelupyourlife.com. And then we're all over Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at Nerd Fitness. And I'm on Twitter and Facebook at, I'm sorry, Twitter and Instagram at Steve Cam. So Google any of those things and we'll be the first thing that pops up. But we'd love to have you in our uh, in our rebellion. Awesome, guys. That's uh, Steve's last name is spelled K-A-M-B. So like lamb, but with a K. So thank you so much for your time today. This was awesome. And guys, as always, thank you for joining us here at Self Made Man. And we will see you next week.